In this lesson, we'll learn how to handle device orientation events. Device orientation events occur when the device orientation has changed. That is, the user flips the device in some kind of way. Now, you might be used to using an iPhone or an Android phone where you hold the device, you turn it, and then the content on the screen turns with the change of the device orientation. So maybe it was in portrait, then it's in landscape. That is a device orientation event. So I'll show you how to sense those events and know that you actually have to write code to respond to those events. It's not automatic. Don't expect that in your application, when the user flips the device, that your content will just magically flip. No, you have to write the flip. We'll first start by sensing the current device orientation. So we'll create a variable called O and set it equal to system.orientation. So this gets the current orientation. And we'll print that to this text object by setting the first argument to O. And let's take a look at what we have. So in the simulator, you can flip the device by going up to hardware and then rotate left or right. But you'll notice that the text doesn't change and that's because we only got the orientation at the start of the code. We actually need to update with each of the orientation changes. So to do this, we'll create a runtime event listener. And we'll listen for the orientation event. And we'll handle it with a method called onOrientationChange. There are two properties that we can detect within the orientation event. One is the type and one is the delta. We'll first work with the type. So we'll set the text property of the text object to reflect the type. And let's see what happens. So I'm going to use some keyboard shortcuts, which is just command and an arrow or control and the arrow if you're on PC. So landscape right, upside down, left, and portrait. But you'll notice that the content doesn't actually flip so that it reflects horizontal orientation to the viewer because we don't want to see things upside down or sideways. So that's where delta comes into play. So what we'll do is we'll set the rotation of the text object to equal its current rotation minus the change, which is e dot delta. And if you're curious to know the value of that, just print it. So now we'll bring up the simulator and the terminal, reload it. And there the delta is negative 90, but you can see that we've rotated it in a way where the horizontal is right for the viewer. So upside down and landscape left. So essentially what you would do if you wanted to implement this with your content is you would perform this transformation on a group that's holding your content, but realize that there's a lot more vertical space in portrait than there is in horizontal. And forgive me if that's obvious, but it bears repeating. So you're going to have to actually change some of the positioning. You can't just rotate the group and expect everything to be okay. You're going to have to rotate the group and do a little bit of repositioning. And that's why in all of these lessons, I'll use a lot of relative positioning according to the height and the width of the device. It's easier to reposition as opposed to absolute positioning. Before closing, there are two more event types in addition to the four that we've seen, and they are face up and face down. So you can actually detect when the device is face down or face up. So we'll put that logic here. If e.type does not equal face up or e.type does not equal face down then we want to actually rotate the content. This ends our lesson on how to handle device orientation events.